Hello guys, welcome back to House of Cremel and welcome back to another video. Today I'm here to talk digital planning. So before you buy any templates, any software, any apps for digital planning, watch this video first. Don't do it yet. All right, guys, so I bet you're wondering why I told you to pause on any digital planning purchases that you have in the future. Lately, I've been kind of seeing a trend in digital planning. It's something that I've kind of thought about dabbling in myself, but the truth of the matter is, for me, um, if you don't know, I am a busy working mom and wife. So there isn't a lot of time in my day to sit down and perform the act of like craft planning as i'll call it by craft planning i mean like washi tape elaborate planners stickers i love it i love the idea i have done it in the past but because i try to <laughs> make the most of every hour of my day that no longer is a priority. So digital planning as we know it today isn't for me either. It's just taking that same um, activity and putting it in a digital format. Also, you have to pay money for the planners. You have to buy the reader software, which is good notes, I think, for most people. And I mean, it's time consuming. And I wanted something that... I didn't have to put all of that into. So if you're like me, then this will likely appeal to you. I'm going to introduce you into a way that I've started digital planning. I use my iPad. So all you need to do my method of digital planning is an iPad. If you own an iPad, then this is free, totally free. You don't have to buy any extra apps or any templates to do what I'm about to show you. The second reason you should do this is because this app, if you have an iPad and you have an iPhone, even if you don't have it, is accessible on any device. So if you can log into your iCloud on your iPhone or any other device you have that logs into an iCloud, you have access to your planner. One of the things that I didn't love so much about the traditional planning um, process is that I like big, beautiful planners, but they're heavy. And that means I'm not going to carry it everywhere I go. It's just going to be in my office or in my bedroom or wherever I wrote the notes. The reason I like this is because I can take everything that I'm trying to remember and organize by with me in my pocket, on my computer, anywhere I can access iCloud, access iCloud. The other reason you should do this is because it's easy. If you are looking for the craft planning experience, like I said, this will not be for you. But if you're looking for a system that will help you keep up with everything that you plan for the week, that is smart, easy, adaptable, no matter the orientation, and free, then keep watching this video. And let's go ahead and get straight into it because I don't want to waste any more of your time. All right, so this is my iPad interface. As I said before, we will be using an iPad to do this planner. Um, first, I'm going to put my iPad on Do Not Disturb so notifications don't interrupt our chat. If you don't know how to do that, just swipe from the right corner of your screen and choose the focus option for those options. The second thing I need you to do is make sure you have the Reminders app uploaded to your iPad. Reminders is probably one of the most underutilized apps on iPhone and iPad, and it often gets offloaded. So make sure it is an active app on your phone because that's what we're about to open. Okay, so this is what the Reminders app should look like on your phone. It may look slightly different depending on how you've used it or not used it. You'll see the Today, Scheduled, All, and Flagged boxes over on the left top side. And you'll also see the Reminders list already there. It's usually the default list. Our planner is going to consist of a number of customized lists that we make here. And before we make those lists, I'm going to show you a little bit about the list functionality. So when you press and hold down one of your lists, a drop down menu shows up. And if you click show list info, you can do some light customization to it. 
meaning you can change the color of the icon you can update the name of the list you can also um, add emojis for the icons if you would like so i'm going to change um, my reminders list to a neutral color because i like that this is important because we're going to continue to do this throughout this process the next thing we're going to do is create another list you do this by clicking the add list link at the bottom of your screen it's blue on mine and we're going to name this list mind dump at the beginning of each week no matter if it's work or home related i like to dump all the things that i can think of that i need to do into one list so i'm creating a digital version of this list on my ipad and i'm going to have some fun with this and make the icon a brain because it's a mind dump. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is create a list for every day of the week. I'm gonna speed things up a little bit, but I just wanna tell you what's coming. I'm just gonna follow the same process I did for the mind dump list and create a list for Monday through Sunday. I like doing Monday through Sunday just because that's my preference. Whenever I've purchased a planner, I like to start my week with Monday because I consider the weekends like the end of the week. If you want, you can start with Sunday. As I said before, you can change the color or icon for each list that you create. I'm going to keep the default icon for each of my daily lists, and, but I am going to change the color for each one. You'll also see me create a grocery and meal planning list because those are two other things I like to plan for the week. All right, the next thing we're going to do is something called grouping. This is a rather new functionality that I've learned about in Reminders. And I love it because we, we can reduce the eye clutter of all the lists that we've created. So we're going to create a group for our daily list, which will serve as our daily planner. And we're going to create one for meal planning as well. To create a list group, you're going to touch the edit button at the top of the screen when you touch edit the add group option will appear at the bottom of the screen right near add list so here i am clicking edit and then you can see i don't know why i clicked out of it but let's click it again there we go and then you'll see the add group option at the bottom and once you touch add group, you can name the group. We're going to call this group daily planner. And in this group, I'm going to include all of the lists that I created for days of the week. So when you touch it, all of the ones that you want to include will pop up to the top. I'm going to do the same for another list that I call meal planning. And once you've created the groups that you want, you can hit create and done. And just to show you how this can create less visual clutter, if you have a lot of lists, all you have to do is touch that little arrow and it will um, expand or collapse any group of lists that you would like. So I really love that. Now I'm going to add a few tasks to my mind dump. This is by no means a complete week mind dump for me, but I want to give you a sense of how I use this system for myself. So I'm just adding a few tasks in to show you how this works. All right, so I finished adding tasks to my mini mind dump. 
I usually do a mind dump each week. I recommend doing it weekly. Obviously, if more tasks come up throughout the week, feel free to add it directly to the daily list or to a mind dump. Now that we've completed our mind dump, we're going to add each task to one of the lists in our daily planner group. But let me show you a few things about tasks. When you touch one, you'll see this list come up. You can set notes for each one. You can even add subtasks for each task. You can also set reminders for a task to pop up for a certain date, time, location, or when you're texting somebody, which is awesome for my brain. For me, I'm going to go ahead and assign a date reminder to each of my tasks. This may not be exact, but this is the date that I think I want to complete it on. Um, it may happen, it may not. But I'm also going to add this task to a new list, which I stated earlier. I want to add each task to a different day in my daily planner list. To add a task to a new list, you just scroll down a bit like you just saw and you'll see the list and you touch it and then you just assign it to whatever list you want to add it to. I'm going to add this task to Wednesday. And I also stated a little bit earlier that you can add subtask to any one task. I like this because this keeps you from creating a giant list of tasks and you can, you know, reduce your visual clutter by creating a subtask under one large task. So I'm going to do this for this um, organized goodwill donations because there are a couple of steps I want to complete for this one task. And now here you just see me adding um, dates and new lists for each of the tasks in my mind dump. I'm literally emptying my mind here. All right, voila, the mind dump list is empty. I have tangibly emptied my mind and organized it into different days of the week. And if you just want to see where you put those tasks and make sure they went to the right places, you can just click your list and make sure it looks the way you want it to. On another note, the reason why I like to add dates to my task, um, even though I'm obviously organizing my task into a day of the week, um, I like to use the today function at the top of the reminders list sometimes because it kind of automates a today to do list, if you will. So on the day of the week that I have reminders um, posted, you'll see everything populate there. And if for some reason I have another task organized into another list that's not in my daily planner, it will populate in this today view as well so I can see everything there. You don't have to take that extra step, but just a note if you want to use that. I feel like the scheduled view is also another powerful function because you can see everything in order. It's kind of like seeing an expanded view of all of your to-do list um, in your daily planner if you want to look at it that way. The all inbox function is just a way to put all of your list in one list, um, so to speak. And if you want to see everything expanded and flagged, it's just for things that you flag. I don't really have a huge, um, a huge use for that one. But, you know, if you want to flag things for urgency, you can. I think that's probably more valuable if you're assigning a task to someone outside of yourself and to kind of note priority. Otherwise, I don't really see it valuable right now in this moment, unless I kind of need to do that for myself too. 
All right, guys, so we're going to take this a step further and use a function on the iPad called the split view to make our planner even more powerful. So if you don't know how to get to the split view function, I've touched it a couple times in my screen recording, but you touch those three dots at the top of the screen in the middle and you'll see some um, window icons. You want to touch the one in the middle. Once you touch that, you'll see the split view option come up and you need to choose another app and you're going to choose your calendar app. And this is the magic in my opinion, guys. Now we have what looks like a regular planner, except it is dynamic. So I have my to do list on the side while I also have my calendar on the right side. The calendar app is also quite powerful. Um, on the iPad and the iPhone because you can switch between a daily view, a weekly view, a monthly view, all on one screen. Um, I love this because in a traditional paper planner, you have to flip pages if it's not already on that page. Also, in my daily planners that I love to use that I write in, there is a specific, I like a to-do list side and I also like a scheduled block side so that I could put my appointments or time block scheduled time blocks of the day there um, you see me just kind of flipping through different ca different calendar views um, there are different ways you can use this but it's super powerful and you can use whatever view you like but I love having both of these apps up at one time because it's my planner digitally and I can put in it whatever I want. This view that you see of the calendar currently, the today facing view is my favorite to use alongside the reminders app because it is most like a daily planner page. Also, if you wanna flip this um, portrait mode, I believe you can do that as well. All right, and before I leave out of here, I'm gonna add a Christmas list and another super important date, my son's birthday list here. There are just some things I wanna be able to jot down quickly here, and I think this is the perfect spot to do it. So yeah, that's it. All right, guys, that's it. That is how I have turned my iPad into my digital planner. I really love this method. I could basically do anything I want with this process. Limit Creative um, limitations, of course, but with my needs and where I am in life right now, I don't need all that. And I have other creative outlets like YouTube and IG. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already at House of Cremel. And make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And like this video. Talk to me. Let me know if this is helpful for you. If there are other tips and tricks that you do that you use in your tablet um, or iPad um, that I didn't talk about here. I believe I'm going to keep doing these types of videos as I figure out more ways to use the reminder app and the calendar and enhance my organization and you know decrease my mental load because that is partially what all of this is all about i want to understand i want to plan my week i want to have access to it at my fingertips i don't want to have to keep spending money on planner materials and um yeah and i want to help you so like i said comment subscribe to the video like the video and let's get organized. Bye.